Hey there, all you guys and gals, you hip cats, cool kittens. This is Comic Stravaganza Live Yee with the prophets of pop culture, the pretty boy prophet, Daniel Shoemake, the diesel punk prophet, John Pica, known also as Big Daddy Cool, Johnny Della Rocca. And um, Daniel and I are swinging just the two of us tonight. Tag team, tag team, intercontinental champions. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you just, you just I killed our wrestler. I apparently. I don't know. Because there's no such thing as the Intercontinental Tag Team. I, I, see, there we go. Oh my I don't gosh. know these things. Oh I never got to watch wrestling when I was a kid. You so never that. did, really? Oh no, my gosh, to. I am a wrestling fanatic. I just watched, um, just watched Raw on uh, Hulu this week. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, into into that. So. Uh, yeah, Daniel and I are on our own tonight. <clears throat> Dee and Nancy are out. Amy's not sit, not feeling well, and um, we're just we're just gonna have a, a good time now. Oh hey, you're wearing an Imperial officer's cap. Yep, I just got out of OCS. I'm good. You, you, and I didn't get force choked by anybody. No. That's nice. No. Yeah. Actually, he's wearing a, a cap that was a gift to me from my good buddy, Buddy Baker. Yeah. And Buddy also gifted me this. That's fantastic. Stormtrooper blaster. And so here's what he, he's made me an offer. So I, oh. I'm doing some original artwork for him, but he has proposed he that proposed? he do a okay. yes, that he do a custom piece for me for my Vic Vader character, combining the Tommy gun That's and a blaster. Cool. That'll be fun. Yes. I I'm can't down. wait. I can't wait. Hey, Jarvis. To see that. So, uh, yeah, we need to give a shout out to uh, Tim Randalls in the uh, virtual production studio. He just asked me, he just told me he was going to force choke me for that. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> and, I don't uh, know these things, Tim. Leave me alone. And uh, taking pictures here in the studio is Jonathan Hayes. Say hello, Jonathan. Hello. And uh, he's snapping some pics. Yep. Right now he's just watching the camera. I don't know what he's watching on the, the card camera. said memory full. Oh, oh, the camera card? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, we'll he's not going to take any. But he's just, just going to make sure that nothing happens with the, yeah. the live feed. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So that'll be great. So, hey, Daniel, what do you want to do first? Do you want to open this first or do we want to talk about some cool stuff first? I say we leave the finale for the end because we I we have been waiting to do this for how long now? Couple months. I'm pretty sure we can wait 25, 30 minutes to right. talk through, and then we'll go off on that. All right. So uh, we got some uh, some events that we got to talk about. The big one, the big one coming up, is Geek and mm -hmm. And between now and December 11th, we're gonna be pimping this hard. Um, Biloxi, Mississippi, December 11th, 12th, and 13th. Um, Ten panels. Diesel Punk. Cosplay, costuming, um, history of alcohol by Mr. Wofford. Uh, Larry Yamiat is going to do the history of diesel punk. We're going to do costuming panels. We're going to do performances with Big Daddy Cool and the Bombshell Kittens. History of alcohol. I am intrigued. Yes. You should be intrigued. It's a pretty fascinating panel that he does. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, he, he, he focuses mostly... On the Prohibition era. Oh, I'm all in. Yeah, I love that. yeah, a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Nothing like Sean Connery, a Scotsman playing an Irishman with the same accent. He always has. That's always fun. It's the it never, it that never, was kind of yeah. random. Untouchables, Prohibition. Oh, oh <sighs> see, I didn't make the connect. That's one of my favorite movies. That's I my top that movie. five. Yeah, but yeah, it, it like shaped a lot of who I am on stage. Okay, I was going to say, if it's shaped a whole lot of you, like, I'm like I, that, I don't know if I'd No, that you know, movie, you know okay. style and... Oh, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. So, not so much on this show, but yeah. uh, in the rest of my life, sure. you know, I'm wearing the fedoras and the hat. Yeah, he does wear fedoras constantly. It's pretty, um, I can't wear them. I, don't, I, I can't pull them off. So, anyway, that's coming up. Now, there's a few other things coming up in between then, in, in particular, the uh, show in Atlanta. What is yeah. that called? Um... Uh, D and Nancy are going to be helping out there. Um, oh, they told Conjuration. me. Conjuration. Conjuration, yeah, yeah. Conjuration is coming up. But the big one is Geekonomicon. If you're anywhere around the uh, around the Gulf Coast, you need to uh, check that out. Now, before we get into questions from the congregation tonight, we want to remind you that you can tweet us live. Eli at, just did. 
Live comics. Yeah, what did he Eli say? Eli just did. I don't know. Uh, Tim, let me know about it. So, Tim, what did Eli say? What's up, Eli? Now, forgive me, guys, because I'm, I'm, I'm actually eating my dinner while we're uh, doing the show tonight. Mmm. Have you ever had this? No. Peter Pan Honey Roast. It is the shiz nizzle. Mm. I haven't had that. So yeah, it's awesome. I'm going for sushi after we get done, so it's okay. Where? Probably Samurai downtown. Oh. That's on the way home. So. Mm, I like it. It's, it's inexpensive as well for sushi, and it's quick. They get you like you're done. You're, they got your food in like 10, 15 minutes out to you. You know who has the best sushi in Nashville? Hmm. And they're not in Nashville. They're in Hendersonville. At uh, Indian Lake. Kohana? Kohana. Not around anymore. I already went up there. They were closed. Are you serious? Yep. That's too bad. They have... They had the best they sushi had, I've ever had. Yes, had. there's a. They have a place in Clarksville. Well, there's the individual that owned it. She was. There's one in Green Hills too, yeah. so maybe that's still. Open. She opened one. She opened them all when she was like 24. I know they changed their name on Facebook from Kohana Japanese Restaurant to Kohana Sushi. I have no so. idea. Anyway, we got a lot of news to cover here. A lot of questions from the congregation. <laughs> um, so the first big news item. And, and this is for all you Trekkers, not Trekkies, Trekkers. Uh, CBS has just announced a brand new Star Trek series I saw that. for 2017. And, um, and we don't know anything else other than they're bringing it out in 2017, right? Yeah, that's all. And, and that it's uh, by Alex Kurtzman, who right. did Limitless, Hawaii Five O, and some others. Um like Limitless, the movie or the show? But apparently this is going to be the, the uh, well, I don't know if it's the movie or the show, but apparently it's going to be online only. So is it going to be just straight in CBS or is it going to be on Netflix too? Or no, well, CBS, CBS has their own online app. Okay. And here's the problem with it. So this is a grinds my gears. CBS, mm -hmm. why is Supergirl not on Hulu? Because it's only available on CBS Online. Now, if you have a desktop computer, yeah. that's cool. You can watch it online. But for people like me who have an iOS device, yeah. like an iPad, you have, to, you have to get the CBS app. And for Supergirl, you have to be a paid subscriber. Now, guys... I can't, I can't watch this show. I can't support this show. I can't hype it. I can't say anything good about it because I've not seen it. And now they're going to do the same thing with Star Trek. This is my... I see... Bummer. I can see both... I see both sides of the argument. Because, while well, yes, we all want our stuff for free because CBS has always been free through TV, normal TV because it's the Columbia Broadcasting System. It's, well, it's, it's advertising it, pays yeah. for it. Yeah, advertising pays for it. But in the... Push and the current migration from your TV that you sit down on your couch or whatever and watch to whatever device you have in your hand. The migration is to that, and they don't have really the ability to advertise. Well, that's that. not true. That's not true. There, there are commercials on Hulu. Well, I'm saying I'm not on Hulu, but on these because you have ad blockers you put on here. That's what's killing everybody. That's why everybody's starting to charge on them because you put your ad blocker. On well, this, and you never have ads. I don't have an ad blocker, but when I watch Hulu on my iPhone yeah. or on my iPad, it shows commercials. Yes, but it's it's I see, I see both sides of the argument. I'm gonna err more on the side of hey, why are you not putting this on TV? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And and for like people like Jonathan behind the camera, he doesn't own a computer at all. So how's he gonna watch it? I've got a laptop, but I don't watch. You just killed my point. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Be a team player, Jonathan. Okay. That's one of those paying Sorry. attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> but um, do you think, do you, the question that was asked to us, do you think too many companies are trying to model themselves after Netflix? Because we've got Hulu, we've got Netflix, we've got Amazon Prime, we've got the Turner Movie Classics Network yeah. online, which again is a paid subscription service. Uh, is it becoming too fragmented? I don't know if it's, I think everybody's trying to jump into the online thing, and then I don't know if, they've got so many smart people working for these production companies, that it's just almost like they're like diving in, let's go, let's focus on this model, and that mo this is the only way it's going to work, well, that's it, they're copying Netflix, and it's like every other, 
one company has massive success for five years, you will see every other company company copy them. Yeah, but here's the problem. All right, so you you remember a little website called Napster? Oh yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah. Well, what came around, came along and did it better? Oh, iTunes. And iTunes. What competes with iTunes? Uh, Amazon or Google Play? Is that what it is? Yeah, I've never. That's the app I've, store. I've never but even used Google, Google Play. Play so is I don't the know. Android operating system. But yeah, I mean, you nothing. Can, I mean, on a music system, on the way you listen to music, iTunes has changed everything. They won. You can't compete with iTunes. Well, if if you're gonna if you're gonna purchase and own music, yeah. if you want to just listen to it, yeah. you've got Pandora, Pandora or Spotify. Spotify. I can't use Spotify. I try. Now there are other services out there that try to do the same thing, yeah. like. Uh, and I can't even name them. Yeah. But you, anybody remember the Microsoft Zune? Oh gosh, that talk about a piece of junk. Yeah, I mean, so so I just you know after Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime, you know how how much more could the market really get splintered? And it wouldn't surprise me if Hulu and Netflix actually merge. Oh, well, that would surprise or me. Or if Amazon buys one of the two of them. Yeah, because Amazon's like the number one retailer on the planet. Yeah, and Amazon bought Comixology. They yeah. bought Kindle. You know, they are, they're growing, 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 and becoming this online media conglomerate. Yeah. And so it wouldn't surprise me if that happened. So anyway, um, yeah, I just, I wish it was either one or the other. Yeah. Showtime now is available on Hulu. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so check that out. Hmm. Believe it or not. I'm I saw that. I was like, Dodd's gonna be really happy about be this. So free. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm happy about it or not. But is um, it who we want it to be, though? Well, let's see. Uh, Greatest American Her Hero remake. Uh, new writer Rick uh, Famawaka. No, Famawaya. You got to be careful how you say that. Yeah. Um, and but you know what? That's all I know about it. Um, it's a remake, and it's um, been announced. Uh, Fox TV, 2017. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Hang on, wait. I'm more. I'm more kind of disturbed that Fox let Star Trek go. They're not doing it themselves because they had it one next generation because it was Fox every night, nine o'clock. Well, no, no, no that, that was well. That that was before. Um, the Paramount UPN network, yeah, yeah. which merged with WB to become CW, okay, yeah, yeah. which is owned by CBS. CBS. Okay, anyway, so I digress. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, so Greatest American Hero. I love this show when I was a kid. Yeah. I love it now. I have the entire series on DVD. Currently, uh, recently, just rewatch. Re first, first day with my new tongue. Uh, re watched the entire series, and you know, it's a little bit dated, but it still holds up remarkably yeah. well. And I don't know, I just maybe I'm getting old, but I, I got a thing with Hollywood just continually doing remakes well, and reboots. Why not come up with something new, fresh, and original? Because, okay, this are is, we really out of ideas? Well, no, it's because all the well. Probably. But you also have all the executives now, all the new executives that have moved up after putting their due diligence in at the bottom, have all come up, are all... Our age. Your yes. Our generations. Yeah, so no, I know. that's why they were like, I love this. I want to see this done better. I want to know what they're working on trying to get a reboot of in the behind the scenes that we don't know what they're working on. How many crazy, like, American Gladiators. Make me, you bring that back. You know what? That could be a really great show if it were like live and, and if yeah. it like were like real. Yeah. You know, it, it always felt well, the old, more the, fake than professional wrestling. The new one, the new one, the newer one did. The old one back in the early nineties, that felt real. I well of course I was probably six when I was watching it. But still well, and I loved it the when the last incarnation was hosted by uh Layla Ali and Hulk yeah. Hogan, yeah. they were great together, and yeah. I loved it. It was a lot of fun, but, you know, they, um... It bring just, that back. It needs to be live. Yeah, bring that back as a live deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Live Comics, uh, Dungeon Dude just tweeted us. 
What was that? Dungeon dude! Something about a facelift. Oh, Lord. How you doing, Tim? Are you keeping up with the questions here? He's trying. He hadn't gotten back to me. After, well, he said, what did he say? Sorry, Tim, I'm kind of slacking. Hang on. Pay no attention to us while we check stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's just the, the CBS thing. What, what did he say? Uh, it's all access if you have your ad blocker. It won't let you watch. See? Uh, you know, and like, I, I tried to watch um, Agent Carter on yeah. ABC online. You got to have a cable provider. And I don't have cable. I cut the cord. Yeah. So it says, enter your cable provider. What? Yeah. I don't have cable. Are you kidding me? I mean, that just irritates the crap, crap out of me. Um, rock the revamp. I don't know what that means. He's probably saying, yes, do the revamp. He, he's liking it. The comic was in need of a facelift. Rock the revamp. So you're saying American, Greatest American Hero? Needs a revamp? Uh, you two, I don't know about it. So you're, I'm, I'm going to go with your opinion on that one. Yeah, I don't know I'm, about it. Um, all right. So um, from the Marvel camp, first promo uh, artwork of Captain America and Iron Man came yeah, out this week. Yeah, saw that. Now... Uh, Iron Man's armor, the rumor is it's the Bleeding Edge armor. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I can't tell one Iron Man armor from the other, to be honest with you. No. I mean, Iron Man. It's Iron Man. Come yeah. on. Um, but the Bleeding Edge armor was had this nanotech kind of and was integrated with Extremis. And, I, you know. Saying, it sounds like the real, the real version of Extremis. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Again, I don't care. We'll see that we're gonna go see the movie. Yeah. So quit it. We yeah. already know it's it's gonna be a huge hit. we everybody's been waiting on it. We're gonna see Spider Man. How about we just like okay, the movie's coming. Let's go watch it. Well, what I am excited about is we are forty three days away. Forty three from the Force Awakens. Oh, I. And have you got your tickets yet? No. Have you? Yes. You know what? December 17th, 10 o'clock at IMAX. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to be able to see the pre the sneak preview. I'm going to have to wait until that Friday, yeah. sadly. Um, but... I won't say anything until you get back from it. I well, won't tell okay. you anything. That'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. And, you know, here's me. Okay? So, the last movie that I bought pre-sale tickets for, and I didn't even buy them. They were gifted to me, was Phantom Menace. Yeah. Um, I had a buddy in... You know, inside, and uh, gave me a dozen tickets to share with my friends. Yep, we all went. And, um, but I've never bought tickets in advance online. Now, I'll buy them, like, advance sale tickets. Yeah. I'll buy them on Fandango for same day. Yeah. But that, even that's rare. I mean, there's a part of me that really likes the adventure of going to the theater, standing in line, Praying to God they're not sold out. Well, see, I I like that, but that bit me once, and I and I swore I will never have it happen again. What was that on? Lord of the Rings, the first one. Oh. And I went, and I, although the funniest part... I wish you, know, you had taken my ticket. No, well, the funniest part of the whole night was we were sitting there in line, and this uh, older gentleman, I can't remember how... Anyway. Wait, he, wasn't that Christmas Day? It was around, I don't know if it was Christmas Day or not, I can't remember. Or maybe Thanksgiving Day. It may have been around in that time. But I'm sitting there and this this gentleman walks up and he was, I don't want to say pleading. It was going to be more of like a very, very animated argument with the ticket sale guy saying that Frodo had told him to go buy the ticket. And everything, it was on and on and on. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy. And he had the most tattered uh, copy of Lord of the Rings I'd ever seen in my life. It looked like a dog had just got done chewing it. But I was like, I kind of felt bad for the guy. So He was a little of, bit religious about it. Yeah, and so instead of going to see Lord of the Rings that night, I went and saw Spy Game. So Spy Game? Brad Pitt and Robert Redford movie. Good movie, but it wasn't Lord of the Rings. I don't remember Spy Game. Good movie. I do remember Lord of the Rings because I was so disappointed. We'll get into that argument later. Well, no, the movie just, like, ends... It, like there is no ending. They they walk around the woods. They walk around. Did the you snow see the other the mountain, two? They walk around the woods some more, and then Frodo and his little friend end up on the edge of the cliff, looking out over the horizon, and it ends. And I'm like, 
You've got to be kidding me. Did you see I the other two? No, no. Well, see, that's your problem. I, you didn't see the end of the No, I hated, I hated the first one. Why would I go see the, uh, the other two? I, I literally exclaimed out loud in the theater when, when it just ended. I said, you've got to be kidding me. Well, see, that's... I thing. sat through two and a half hours for this? Well, there's three books. They oh, come on. Of- I, if I want to watch someone just walking around the woods, I'm going to go out to the woods and watch the hikers walking around the woods for free. I'm not going to pay ten twenty five or whatever ticket prices were then to watch dwarves and elves and hobbits follow a decrepit old man, decrepit old wizard around the woods. Come on. You can email us at comicstravaganza All hate at mail gmail goes to dot com. John on this one. I no, you know what? There, there are people who completely agree with me. Well, yeah, but there's also a much larger contingent that don't on this one. So we didn't even <laughs> have any questions about, about Lord of the Rings. That was completely in the Anyway, d- don't mind us going off on tangents. All right, so question for us. Do you hmm. think Fox should leave Wolverine out of X-Men Apocalypse? And do you think this movie will stand on its own legs without Jackman? Because apparently that they've lost faith in the movie. Fox has had Hugh Jackman in for reshoots for the latest X-Men that he was supposedly not in. Or... Wait, what? Apparently Wolverine was not going to be in X-Men Apocalypse, but now he's doing reshoots. So they're they're putting him in the movie now. Yes. But Fox hasn't officially announced that he is in it. Is that true? Wait, what? Huh? I always thought he was going to be in. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I think... help me with some fact-checking here. People are not excited about that. I think they're more excited about the butchering of the Apocalypse costume, for one. And making him look, like, normal. Instead of being the huge individual he is. Yeah, Apocalypse needs to be a beast. Yeah, Apocalypse needs to be nine and a half feet tall and six feet wide and everything else. Yeah, I mean, that guy in the movie, no offense to anybody in our audience... Looks like he should be walking in a pride parade. Well, no, it, it, that or he looks like Ivan Ooze from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Oh, that's 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 true too. He looks just like that. And I'm sorry. He looks like a short dude. He's like yeah. the same height as Psylocke. Yeah. Hello, hello. No. That's like it's no Fox. Just, just, just. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not excited. I, Fox I thought... hasn't done a very good Marvel movie since like X two. See, okay, so everyone holds up X2 as their favorite of X2 the X2 or like movies. the second Wolverine movie. I really enjoyed that. Where it, it was Japan. It was okay. I like that. One. It was all right. Um until the Silver Samurai was a giant robot instead of yeah, a robot. mutant with an electromagnetic power. Um anyway, I, you know, a lot of people diss X-Men 3, but that's my favorite. I love X3. I don't know. Maybe I just have I don't to know. X3 I I didn't like the way that they did Phoenix, but whatever. So, this this is a cool question. In, sure. uh, let's see, Sci-Fi is doing a new Van Helsing I series. I saw this, yeah. With a female uh, lead, mm-hmm. Vanessa, Vanessa Van Helsing. Helsing. Okay. So, um, not Van Helsing, but Vanessa Helsing. Okay. Um, five years in the future, vampires have taken over the world, and she's on the offensive to take them all out. I'm all in. Yeah, I like the idea. I love the idea. And um, do, do we you have any idea who's going to play Vanessa yet? I, you know, we don't. This would be a perfect segue for Ronda Rousey to freaking learn how to act. Ooh, put her in. Ooh. put her in it now. Ooh. Do it. And and on sci-fi, you know, it's like it's like magicians who perform at nursing homes to get good. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're bad on sci-fi because there's nobody. Oh, that was terrible. I should have said it like that. Well, anyway. I mean, it's kind of the truth. There's a handful of shows that people put her did. in this show. Let her learn her craft in this show, and then Give her a she season be and a half, Captain Marvel, and then let her be Captain Marvel. I like that idea. I like that idea, and I just let it go for free. <laughs> Well, fall, fall of 2016 is when they say it's going to happen. Yeah. And um, I, I... I don't think she's... And she didn't have any fights coming up. Sci-fi. Let's Sci- go. Hello. Come on. Listen to the prophets. We're never wrong about this stuff. If you do this with Ronda Rousey... You will... The, the viewership on sci-fi will quadruple. You guys I'm will become serious. the number one cable 
network. I'm dead serious. Worldwide. I, it, it would be worth every penny you had to pay her. Now, hey, Tim sent us That's one other question. Uh, what? He just said he, they've already casted Van... Dang it. If it's already in production. All right. So, so I'll tell you. Whatever. Now, now that we know that it's not going to be Ronda Rousey, we will know that it will have uh, poor writing. C yeah, poor writing, bad CGI. Horrible CGI. And still, somehow, people will be watching it and raving about it. It'll be like Sharknado. I hope not. Actually, Sci-Fi has had a couple of good shows. They Sliders was good. Was that on Sci-Fi? Uh, I thought that was like TNT. That may have been Sci-Fi. I don't um, Or FX. I don't remember. Yeah. Sliders, I've been watching that. Sliders right now. is Ooh, so good. It's a good show. Although the special effects are... Eh. Well, okay. It was mid late 90s. Yeah. Right now, wasn't it? But so, yeah, okay. but, but the story is good. And yeah. anything with uh, John Rice davies oh, in it, yeah. you well, got to watch it. Bloodsport 4, you don't want to watch that. Oh, that was yeah. like, John's in that one, you don't want to watch that. Really? That's pretty bad. Yeah. It's pretty dull. <laughs> anyway. That's too bad. Sorry. I'll just stick with one Bloodsport. But oh, it's John Reese Davies. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he was the redeeming quality of Lord of the Rings, but. It's Sala. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, Sala's awesome. But no, the, the, I will say a funny John Reese Davies story. Okay. Uh, he, when he introduced himself to Sean Astin, when they were first started doing walkers and read throughs and all that kind of stuff for the movie, he walks up to Sean and they're all in. Sean's about my size. He's about 5'7, five, 5'8. Five, John's about 6'1. And he walks up to him and he goes, My name is John Reese Davies and I live on the Isle of Man, which is a 10,000 alcoholics hanging onto a rock in the middle of the Irish Sea. Which is true. <laughs> That's hilarious. I listen to it. I, it I'm reading Sean Aston's book, and I'm rolling when I hear this. It's so funny. Anyway. Oh, hey, you know what? What? Tim is commenting as we go along. Yay! Um, Tim O. So, hey, Tim, you, you sent us one last question before we went live. I can't find it. What was this? Oh, the Netflix lineup. All right. So, oh, yeah. Back to the Marvel thing. Yeah, so Netflix, um, Marvel's Netflix series. Of course, they launched Daredevil earlier this year, which was epic. It's coming out in January. Isn't it? The next Daredevil? Yeah, yeah. And and Jessica Jones is coming out... In a couple of weeks. In, in a couple of weeks, which I can't wait. Yeah. Um, but they announced this week they're shaking it up. Originally planned was going to be an Iron Fist series, and they've they've shelved that in favor of The Punisher. And, and here's my thing. Because I like both characters. Yeah, but we've already seen The Punisher. I want to see something new and fresh. I I'm, want to see yeah, Iron Fist. I want to see Iron Fist. I adore Punisher and I adore Iron Fist. I was really, 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 really excited for Iron Fist. Here's what I hope happens. I hope that they actually take the Luke Cage and Iron Fist series yeah. and merge them like, like the comic series. Yeah. That and would and be, they make them the, the duo. I would be fine with that. Yeah, that would be awesome. I would I would be down with that. But I'm but I will say this, I'm very excited for Jessica Jones. I'm very excited for that. Why are you excited for it? Because, A, it's new programming. Yep. And I don't have to sit there and cycle through all the other stuff I've already watched yeah. on Netflix. Okay. Because other than, yeah, I just, anyway. Um, hmm. But it's fresh and it's, it's original. It's new. And nothing like it. And David Tennant's in it. I'm a big David Tennant fan. Yeah. It, it's going to be great. I can't wait. And, um, yeah, Jessica Jones in a couple of weeks. All right, it is time. Dun, 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 dun. We have got our brand new comic bento box. This is the masks bento box. So this is the thing. This is the first time John has been able to control himself and actually let us open one on camera. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this has been curated by Gail Simone. Yeah, Gail Simone. It's Gail Simone. So uh, we're going to open this bad boy up. And uh, I brought along... That's the a, Indiana Jones knife. A little knife to uh, do the job here. Is that a K-board? Um, no, it is actually a uh, U.S. Navy pilot's oh, it's survival a pilot, knife. Pilot's yeah. Survival. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not the Marine survival knife. No, no it's not K-bar. There we go. All right, let's see what we got here. Dun, 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 dun. And by the way, we're going we're gonna to probably edit this just a little bit so we can send it to Comic Bento. Yeah. Comic Bento box unboxing. Ooh, let's see what we got. All right, so but first of all, the packaging is pretty epic. Yes, it's very, very good packaging. Very, Isn't very that awesome? Yeah. Very thick cardboard. It's very pretty. 
Got oh, some it's bubble, bubble wrap. wrapped up. This is for okay. One really good thing for this, if you're ever if you're if you're like us and you get stuck in traffic a lot, wrap this around your steering wheel and tape it there. It gives you something to do when you're stuck in traffic. Well, that's not a bad idea. Life hack number three. All right, so you what open up the box and here we have a sealed vacuum sealed vacuum sealed bag. Take, take that. that. Yeah. Buy box with. An additional cardboard backing. Cardboard backing to keep so, everything so, straight. Yeah, so it's vacuum sealed, so there's some cushion here. And uh, we're going to cut this puppy open. I'm going to have to go a little bit. No, no, no. So we're going to open that up. And, first of all, they, this is what I love about Comic Bento. On a postcard glossy stock, they send you a packing list with a description of what the bento box is and what's in it. So, ooh, ooh, there's good stuff. Yeah, so yeah. the very first one is... Who we were talking about earlier. Captain Marvel. This is uh, Higher, Further, Faster, More, the trade paperback of the uh, debut of her series. She looks cross-eyed on the cover. She does a little bit. Kelly Sue DeConnick is the uh, writer, and uh, the artist is... Uh, David Lopez. Yeah, you know, the only complaint I have about this series, and I didn't read it, so I'll be excited to read it, is is this. Is why does Captain Marvel need a mask helmet that turns her hair into a mohawk? I think she's dropped that, but this was the only thing I didn't like about this series. I mean, that looks perfectly good. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. a great uniform. So, anyway, Captain Marvel... Now, this, this one I'm super yeah. excited about. I've wanted to read this since it came out. Mark Wade, Daniel Indro, and Ron Ronaldson. Ronaldson Ferrer. 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 Yeah. Ferrer. Green Hornet, Volume 1, The Bully Pulpit. And um, Mark Wade is one of my favorite writers. The Green Hornet is one of my favorite all-time characters. How awesome is Kato in this? I have to see. Uh, he's probably pretty awesome because Kato is, is pretty Kato, awesome. I mean, it's Bruce Lee. Come on. Now, this is an interesting choice. Uh, Gail Simone picked this. So, um, this is the Collected Edition Valiance Harbinger mm -hmm. uh, Omega Rising by Joshua Dysert and uh, Carrie Evans, Louis La Rosa, and Ian Hannon. And I gotta be honest with you, I have never read any of the Harbinger books. Or the artwork's fantastic. Though. The artwork is great. Or or is it pronounced Harbinger? Harbinger. Harbinger. <clears throat> um, artwork is great. A lot of people rave about Harbinger. It's always been a very popular Valiant series, but I've just never read it. Well, now you have it. Maybe, maybe that's one you ought to take home. I'll take it. Sure. Give us a review. I'll read it. And then, oh, this is from Dark Horse, I'm and this all about is that. this is a book I'm not familiar with at all. But I love the aesthetics here. I'm all about that. That looks good. Yeah, there's there's some cool. Dude, magic. that's fantastic. Yeah, isn't that great? For those of you wondering, we're talking about Orchid from uh, Tom Morello, Scott Hepburn, and Dan Jackson. This is a Dark Horse. Dark Horse Collected Edition. And, um, wait, is that X? Mm -hmm. No, that's a red star on it. Oh, I don't know anything about this series. I've never seen it or heard of it. But I'm post apocalyptic. Yeah, it's a red star. Yeah. Huh. Kind of like a hunter version of Scarecrow. Like Car Craven and Scarecrow got together and hung out. Yeah, them. yeah. So, looks good. Yeah, I like it. it's kind of this uh, post-apocalyptic punk. So sure, I'm in. Yeah, I'll read these two and report next week. So, so if you look at this, uh, what's the cover price here? Cover on price these? on Orchid is eighteen dollars. Um, ten dollars. So we're twenty-eight right now. This is nineteen ninety-nine twenty. So that's $48. forty-eight. Forty-eight dollars and how much is that? This is nineteen ninety nine. Another twenty bucks, so sixty, seventy dollars for less than twenty bucks. Yeah, 
60 20 bucks you get 70 dollars worth of good stuff and it's not junk and it's really it's sturdy stuff this is the stuff you see at barnes and noble yeah like this is the stuff you go when you're bored and you're like me you go to barnes and noble and sit and read these things for four hours and they kick you out what i love about comic bento is <clears throat> they do this awesome mix of real high-end blue chip, yeah, you know, and then really solid indie stuff. Um, like I, I've never heard of Orchid, so this is going to be a cool chance for me to yeah. check out something new. I've never read Harbinger or Harbinger because you know my budget is limited, but I can check this out, and and if I like it, I'm going to go buy the series, yeah. right? So um, we'll do it. We'll do a swap. You, I'll read these two this week, yeah. and then you can read those, and yeah, we'll do that later. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And um, so I love this service. You can check it out at mycomicbento.com or click the link in our show notes. Um, less than 20 bucks, man. You can get a surprise box of comics in your mailbox every month. And, um, and it helps us out. Yeah. Helps pay the bills and keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. That so, John has a tendency to forget to turn on. Yeah, they're, they're both on. They're both on tonight. Oh, yeah. Studio lights wow. are on tonight. Um, anyway, that that's it. That's well, we it. got to talk about GMX because Nico was here last week. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did GMX, GMX. I was at GMX. GMX, it was really fun. Yeah. Um, the best part is I'm walking through and they've got one of those big stand-up coin-operated X-Men games sitting right there in the middle. Oh, yeah, it yeah. Was in the, in awesome. the, wait, what, that was in the arcade room, though, wasn't no, it? No, that was, was just out, in the, that was out in the main hall. Walking through. It was great. I hadn't seen one of those in years. I loved that game. It was, was so kid. much fun. Um... There's a actually there's now they're working on a maker space here in Nashville. I ran into those guys. Yeah, yeah. We and we have actually talked about it here on the show. Yeah. Um, they're uh, they're connected with D and Nancy um, and and Cosplay Collective. Got to hang out with them. They've got some pretty cool stuff, and they're looking for donations right now. So if you want to throw some money in and get it rocking and rolling, they're looking for a space because us being in Nashville, any kind of open space for anything gets bought up by any band that needs a rehearsal space. Yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. It's every, in, it, you name it, if there's an open garage that somebody's wanting to rent out, a band is going to use it for practice space. Or the people who own the space want to charge $500 a that night too. for it. Yeah, that too. Yeah, it's crazy expensive but here in Nashville. they're waiting to see if they catch a spot. They've got corporate donations and everything. They've got, they're going to have a 3D printer. They're going to have welding equipment. They're going to have all sorts of stuff, all sorts of goodies. I'm probably going to jump in it because I have other ulterior motives for stuff to make, not just stuff for this genre. So anyway, it was fun though. We had a good time. Um, I did a panel. Um, you did do a panel. Yeah. Steampunk versus diesel punk. That was a lot of fun. Eugene and I had a good time yeah. ribbing each other and, and laughing. And I think the audience dug it in a big way. And um, the Geek Slam was fun. You missed the Geek Slam. I did. I did. Geek I had Slam was fun. The guy that was uh, cosplay as a uh, Sherlock Holmes from the BBC thing. He ended up winning, which was good fun. Uh, there was one person that was in the finals. It was she. They were cosplayed as a Cusco. Is that the guy from Emperor's New Groove? Those okay. Friends, that was David Spade. Okay. The first round she was funny. They were funny. Second round there was yeah, it's kind of getting a little old. And then the third round all I just turned distended into I'm awesome. I'm like shut up and come up with something. But anyway. Now did you get to watch the cosplay contest? I didn't get a chance to do that. I was I had to work Saturday. Apparently one of our friends. Um, James Nethery, mm -hmm. who was on the show Steampunked, missed the cutoff time to oh, pre-register for the cosplay no. contest. That sucks. And uh, he came in his steampunk armor that he built himself. Yeah. And um, Man, oh, I, right. I guess everybody's kind of glad that competed that he wasn't in it. Because he won. Hands down. Yeah. It was awesome. But it was a good con. It was a lot of fun. The... Uh, it was bigger this year than it has it been the previous years. It was. It was a good con. The video game room was cool. I walked through and just checked some stuff out. They had a, they had a Star Trek pinball machine in there. Full on. Yeah, old I know. Star. I was like, yeah, that's awesome. The, that, that electronic game room was awesome. The, yeah. the, the analog game room was really fantastic. Analog game room was always full whenever I walked in. I loved, too, that the, there were actually more vendors than could fit in the vendor room. Yeah. So they spilled out into the main hallway. So... Even if you weren't able to buy a pass for GMX, there was a lot of stuff going on yeah. in the hallway, vendors that you could visit and buy from, and you know, it was it was just it was a good con. Yeah, Nico and the team did a great did a very job. Good job. Great job. I have nothing but good marks. Um, the one disappointment I had, only only thing I was disappointed in 
was in the vendor room, not one single comic book dealer did I see. No, well, it may not be It doesn't mean that they fault. weren't there. Yeah. And it, well, no, it's not their fault necessarily. But I, I you know, I, I was a little bit disappointed. You've got, and, and as a, if you are a comic book vendor and, or dealer yeah. and you didn't participate in GMX, to me, you're missing out on one of your prime demographics. It was a very got strong. All the cosplayers there. Yeah. And, it was a very strong anime continued this year, which is fun. Anime is cool. I like anime. I, I watch it a lot. It's just. That's what the strong contingent was this year. Okay, that's fine. Well, that makes sense because they're yeah. connected with MTAC. But yeah. when I was there Friday night, it was mostly um, superhero cosplay. But anyway, yeah, it was awesome. No, Can't wait show. till next yeah, year. Good time. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Conjuration in November, Geekonomicon in December, then uh, 2016, uh, Mid South Con, Rathacon, New York. Huh? The one in Nashville. So fanboy, nah, you well, fanboy expo. Did you see my comments? I that? saw your comments. I was gonna put the Michael Jackson popcorn meme on there. I'm just here for the comments, but well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what what all happens. You know, here's here's my two cents. Fanboy expo is coming to Nashville. Under normal circumstances, I would say that's great. However, we do already have GMX. We have MTAC. We have Mark Ballard's shows mm -hmm. who he's our partner yeah um you know so uh nashville comic and toy show murfreesboro anime comic con jackson jackson and and clarksville and franklin you know there's so much happening here plus you add in wizard world and, and so, con in atlanta well and atlanta. there's there's some other yeah. like the like the the lone wolf tattoo yeah. con, which yeah. is a lot of the same demographic I just don't think Nashville needs another con. Their reason for coming here is they say Nashville needs, Nashville deserves a f big, fun, professional con without gouging the fans. And I I'm sorry, I we already have that. Yeah, we, we, we have. Got, I think it's more along the lines of, and again, I haven't been to a fanboy expo yet. I can probably pretty much guarantee I'm probably going to go to the one when it comes here. We, Just, uh, yeah, we're probably we're gonna go. go, but it's don't don't put it that way, because it's not that we're got the, the cons here put gouging fans or anything like that. Because you're not or that we're them. lacking, or that we're lacking at all. It's because you see a market that you need to be in. Yeah, just call it like it is. Yeah. Now I will tell you, the guys who run Fanboy Expo are are in Las Vegas. They're about yeah, and and there was a group out of Orlando, Florida that that came up here. And did the Nashville Comic Expo mm -hmm. at Opryland. They've done it for two years. I don't know what the last one did. If it was any had any success. If, if so, do my my thing is, do we need people from outside the area coming here to do a con? And I know Wizard World does that, and there's a lot of criticism on Wizard World for that very thing. But do we need yet a third entrant to the market the only, from out of town? The only thing I can see that that could possibly even help is bringing and this is going to sound really bad and I'm going to feel like a jerk but bringing the bigger name celebrities to the cons what Wizard World brings huge names that's what I'm saying like yeah there's that but it, do we have enough local connections to bring that kind of stuff you know what I mean like Adam West and all those guys. Well, Adam West will show up at a supermarket grand opening. True. Yeah. Yeah. Any boat show, you'll see Adam West. <laughs> um, I don't. Anyway, know. we'll 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 research that and we'll figure. Yeah, it out Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't have a solid opinion yet. I'm just asking yeah. a lot of questions. Yeah. So um, we'll see. Well, that is it for this week. We yep. want to thank our sponsors, GraphicPolicy.com, Comic City Conventions, and of course Comic Bento. Check them out on the show link. And uh, make sure you subscribe to graphicpolicy.com, their newsletter, daily, weekly, or uh, as it happens. Yeah. Great stuff there. And uh, like us on Facebook, Comic Extravaganza Live. Follow us on Twitter, at Live Comics. And you can even connect via email, comicstravaganza at gmail.com. And we even have our own webpage. Yeah. Comic Extravaganza Live at, or Comic Extravaganza Live.com. Yeah. So, uh, Tons of ways to interact, connect, and follow us and be friends and fans and recommend our show to your friends and family. And if you're a con out there 
and you'd like to have us come and do some panels, MC some contests. Hang out. I can act like a fool wherever you want me to. I don't we care. would love to do it. And... Uh,